Hi, I'm Dave Clark. I've been making music since, uh, ooh, since uh, mid to late 80s and uh, worked with various people. Done loads of remixes for Chemical Brothers, Underworld, Louisa, Maelstrom, I Am Clote, Depeche Mode, Adam Clayton, Laurie Mullen. I'm now finally back in the studio again after a few years and it feels fucking amazing. tools that I've chosen, it's going to give you the ability to tonally shape very, very quickly, very, very effectively your mix. Um, it's going to give you the ability to gel it together if necessary in, in either across the two channel or in um, uh, buses. They'll be more often than not the ones that I'll choose instantly. So I think that's as authentic as an answer you can ever get from me. One of the good things about the API is the, the graphic version anyway, very, very quick tonal shaper. It's, it's like a really broad brush where you can just like instantly just go in there and just do what you need to do. And then you can tighten it up a little bit with maybe another EQ afterwards. Um, but it's just very, very instant um, for, for the sound. Well, the Sheps, I mean, the Sheps has a different character. Um, the Sheps is, is more rounded, can deal with a lot more different things. It's less specific for tasks. Um, sometimes just driving the fuck out of something can be really good fun, uh, quite evil. Um, you have to be careful of the, the, the levels, so you know there is nothing above zero. Of course, in the digital realm, it's kind of difficult to forget that from an analog background. But sometimes you want to go, fuck it, let's go plus 15 and see what happens, but uh, you have to be a little bit careful. Apex is, is, is a fun thing. Um, as you know, it's very, very easy to be uh, suckered in by an oral excited to think that uh, let's put it on everything and let's make everything shiny and sparkly. Uh, you have to use it sparingly and you have to make sure that um, you don't take the piss with it. Some oral exciters can be quite brutal and you don't really know what they're doing psychoacoustically until afterwards and then you realise that you've turned something into shards of really painful spiky glass. Whereas with this uh, oral exciter, it just, um, it can make the right source into 3D. Sometimes I suggest with all things like oral exciters is take the piss and then back down. Take the piss and then back down because you're going to be damn sure that if you keep it in the take the piss position, it's not going to work. Uh, but if you then take the piss and then back down and then maybe just a little bit more and that's where it, that's where it should be. Low air, that's, that's a fun thing. I never run that on its own, I always run that parallel so I can actually change the mix within the mix. I use the presets very quickly on that to find what I'm looking for, sometimes like car passing pass club or whatever it's called. I use that as, as, a, as a bass control for like the real, real low end. And then I have that on another channel and then I'm, I will bring it in, bring it out, bring it in, bring it out. I never sidechain anything at all, so I'm always mixing with bass so that it sits in the track without being lazy and sidechaining it. So with low air, I just use that as, as some way of just getting some really severe low end in, in the mix because, you know, obviously making club music, you kind of need that. And it's, it's a fun way of just having ridiculous amounts of sub bass in there in a controllable manner on another channel. Uh, the Metaflanger has its own signature sound. Um, I miss the old days of like the Lexicons and the Eventides in the box. Uh, but the Metaflanger is just a quick go-to for just getting those spacey hi-hats that are, are the cliche that I really enjoy having sometimes. I always use the Metaflanger on, on uh, hi-hats and snares. You know, sometimes I have maybe like three or four different snares in my tracks all backing each other up in a different way. And then like maybe I might have it just on the attack on one of the snares and I have like a small attack and then I just have it there and then you don't have it on the decay. So you go and it sounds really good. No, it sounds on camera, but to me it sounds great in my mind. A flanger to me is always going to be like a, a space machine. But sometimes you want your strings to sound wonky. <laughs> Can't explain it. And so like you, you dial up the wow and flutter on that in such a way, but it's so cool because everything's automated you can change that within the mix as well. And it also, you know, the, the cliche of, of any tape emulation is the gelling. But sometimes you want to have different kind of gelling within the mix and to, to work against each other and work with each other. And uh, with the Kramer Master Tape, it's, it's a very authentic 
uh, way of, for me doing wow and flutter. I don't really use the delay too much on that one um, because I use the J37 for that. Um, but I will sometimes again put it on, 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 on a drum bus. Um, and if I'm just using just the, uh, sometimes I'll also put it on bass lines and if I'm just using that, I'll run it at like 7.5 inches per second so that it just, again, is like a big glue of, 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 of a brown sound. I see it as, as a brown sound. And then with, with 15 inches per second, it's again a nice thing to do with, with the drum bus sometimes. If you've got like um, uh, hi-hats and you've got uh, snares or toms in there, it just uh, brings uh, a nice sort of, airiness to it and it tames things down so even if you did not listen to me and you took the piss with the uh, or exciter a little bit too much and then you put it through there and then it just tames it down a little bit and again it sticks it all together yeah the drone meters i mean i was very excited when they came out it's um i've always seen those in radio studios for some reason and i, I love meters crazy amount of meters um uh, I love the different ball ballistics they all have, and sometimes you can go stupid and have like CBC, BBC. But with the drone meters, what, what's what's really cool about those is that they they they're like an LED VU. It's they 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 show energy. You get an energy vibe off it. You see what's happening, and you get an energy vibe. It's not just like a mathematical readout of like you can see your 0 0.00001 from zero and you know it, you know, you actually, you get like a real energy vibe from it without actually having to say, maybe have like an, uh, I think it's an LUF S uh, meter on the side. You actually just look at that and it is what it is and you can, I have that when I actually do mastering, I would just have that as a feel good meter. It shows me the energy that I'm, I'm getting from the whole track. Um, and sometimes I'll have them on every single, every single track that I've got going and just have shit loads of meters and I can see what's going. And it's, it's, a, it's a quick look one. It's, it's, it's very, very uncomplicated. It's a quick look one. Um, and then, you know, if I'm doing like uh, something for, for radio, then just for that authentic radio side, I just have the little, the round versions of it, you know, like the really old school. And it's, it's a fun thing to have. The, the only tip or trick I can say is, is not to always work in the same way. I having the same chain of plugins, move things around and see sometimes the complete inverse of the way that you might feel pressured to work inside might work better for you and but it might only work for that project so just be open to do things differently every single time because that's what imagination is for i've said it before is just be in touch with your imagination 